That's good. We presented our own film. Did you see that? We presented it. Mm. Both of us. Mm. Hi, uh, who are you? Uh, I'm Vadim. I am the co-director, producer of the Olympic Pick Farmer. Who are you? I am Gary Senor, the co-director, co-writer and co-producer of the Olympic Pick Farmer. And who are you? Me, hiding in the corner. I'm Simon Scotland, and uh, I was the associate producer of Leon the Big Farmer. Can we sing along with this bit? Can anyone remember? Expensive title, as you can see. Ah, uh, this is the swimming pool where the second AD decided to try and walk up on water. Do you remember? Yeah, fell in. I don't recognise any of these names. Who, who actually are these people? These are what the did he people. do? They really made the What film. did he do? Who's she? Eva Lynn, Swedish editor. Uh, John and David, who went on to do... All sorts of things. All sorts of things. Lock, stock and two smoking barrels. Exactly. Interesting, interesting anecdote. They alternate the order of their names on every other film. Yes. I also have to let you know that um, I actually still have one of these garden gnomes. <laughs> you don't. I do. <laughs> I've been in my loft for so long and eventually I put it outside. Paul Brooks, he went on to do lots of things, lots didn't he? Lots well of done, things. Paul. Yeah, produced and these uh, guys, Shadow of the Vampire. These guys feature in the film very shortly. And, uh, and that's you, Simon. Oh, it's Simon, it's right. your credit. Where was this house? This house was in South London. This was the time no, you made it? me go to South Home London. Counties. Home counties, home counties. That is South London, oh. I think. It's beyond South. Thames Ditton or somewhere like that. What's this thing in the right-hand corner? So, what is that? Ornament. Garden ornament. Who put it there? It's already there. It's a feature of the location. Came in the price. Which was nothing at all. Michael Norman, my co-writer, Scottish. And this was his first feature film. He's a stand-up comedian and writer. We've got to talk about this because everybody asks about the names and why one is bigger and than the other. Like, how did we manage to co-direct and co-produce? Oh, it's probably because you did more of the producing and I did more of the directing. -ish. I did more producing, you did more directing, and then we just sat around and on, on, we never actually had an argument, did we? No. During the entire making, apart from about one pig. Yeah. That you insisted on shooting. They shot too many pigs. Exactly. Very interesting. These two actors both claimed they could uh, play table tennis. <laughs> and they spent hours and hours practicing. They did. And I think the previous shot was the only one where he actually managed to hit the ball all, all night. This was the offices of our lawyers, I believe. No, no, no. This is our executive That's our lawyers, and this is our executive producer's office. There they are. Hang on. Let's, let's call them. That's uh, Howard Kitchener. Uh, David Archer! And then that's not an executive producer, that's an actor. Exactly not that the others didn't do an excellent job. This is a steady cam shot, okay, okay. which of course Gary and I both claim to know how to use. <laughs> Mercifully, the, the person who did it was very, very good. Um, did know what he was doing. If you lose this one after all this time, people will talk. You know, you can be too honest. Too honest? Look, no cuts. Mm. Or a flat even. That's a white lie here or there. See, I, I'm not actually Jewish, and uh, I didn't realise that, that, that seafood uh, shellfish weren't kosher until this film. They're not, you know, it's because they scavenge and mm. stuff like that. Well, he, he's about to tell you. Yeah. Gordon, can we talk later? Why would they ban shellfish? And what were the chances of the Jews finding a shell of a lobster in the desert? You see, I, I, those, I do find prawns disgusting. I don't understand how you can eat that stuff. Really find it. That's my file effects there. What is my Oh, it look. is, yeah. Mark Frankel, the, the guy playing Leon here. That's is, your watch as well, Gary. That's my watch. That's my file effects. That's half my clothes. Gordon stabbed you in the back. I think that was my haircut at the time, actually. I mean, I think, the, I mean, this is a lesson in low-budget filmmaking. You get your executive producers to give you their office for free. Mm -hmm. You get your lawyers to give you Look, that's their Simon Scotland's free. jumper there that he's wearing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. But of course, most of the clothes came from Marks and Spencer's, didn't they? Yeah, so then we took them back afterwards. Yes, because they wouldn't of course. Let, us, let them have us for nothing. So. Also, one of the extras in this scene is my oldest friend from school, Bill. Bill. 
This is John Woodvine, very fine Shakespearean actor, doing a very fine Shakespearean Italian cod accent. <laughs> Now, do you know, I don't know if you know, the reason they're called Gutterman and Plontikov, I'm not telling you actually, because that's libelous, I'm just not to say <coughs> Let's carry anyway, on. they live in Scotland. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying anything. Retract, retract. Some one of our investors in this scene as well. Yeah, that's the other golden rule of low-budget filmmaking. Yes. Put your investors in the film. Unless they put in lots of money, in which case the one thing you don't let them do is put their children in. Is it on the left-hand side of the screen? Actually, if you saw some, you know... Yeah, there he is, look! Oh, look, that's an investor. Yes. As you point out, a listed building. So? Well, there's no way we'd be able to buy it. This is the scene, of course, that alienated Gary from, from, yeah, from any property developer yeah, in the world. <clears throat> Have you managed to buy another flat since? No, I, I spent my whole life knocking estate agents in films, and then I never managed to get a good deal on a house. It's very odd. Mm. Or a flat, even. Now, this scene is actually a complete rip-off of the scene where my sister got engaged. I don't know if I ever told you that. Really? Yeah. This is what it's like in the senior household. Are my parents like to be watching this? No. Mm. Okay. <clears throat> they, won't be listen, they won't be listening to the director's commentary, that's for sure. They will, Gary, Gary they will talks, after I tell them. He talks rubbish most of the time. I don't want to hear him. I love that house. My wife and I were going to buy it once, weren't we, Hilda? Not married. I love that joke, but no one gets it. I love that, I love that joke. I love that joke. Yeah. Harvey. Harvey. Where's Valerie? Oh, she's talking to Diana about breastfeeding. How long till the baby's born? 26 weeks, all being well. We're so excited about having another grandchild. Aren't we, Sydney? We certainly are. We're both very proud of you. This is obviously a shot from the point of view of a camcorder. <laughs> and uh, one of my favourite uh, moments at the cast and crew screening, which was the first screening of the film, was to see all the extras from both this scene and the scene later in the film. Um, a large number of them turning on their video cameras during the screening <laughs> yes. to film the scenes Absolutely. with themselves in it. Oh, <laughs> then finishing filming when the scenes end and then leaving the cinema. Lots of fun. Not with me, you didn't. Charles, you don't remember anything. Gene Anderson there on the right. And sadly no longer with us. No, the brothers. Yeah, from the brothers. Dad, can we talk? Sure, that's what I'm asking for. Talk. In, in private. This house is Diane Fine's house, which we found, I think, with a data spare during filming. And I think you're about to see the owner, Diane Fine, actually in her own lounge. She just had it decorated, I think. Yeah, mm. Radlett, wasn't it? Yeah, it was in Radlett, yeah. Mm. Golden rule of any kind of filming don't let a film crew into your house. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> Can't hear you! Didn't you go on radio to try and find this house? I went on everything to try and find this house, yeah. It's a mighty fine house we found eventually. Look at that. Oh, there she is, there she is. To the left of the bloke with the glasses. Oh, yeah, there she is. There she is. That's her, that's her house. That's her house. She's sold it now, I think. But... Sold today. wonder who's in it now. Bye-bye, another state agent. This afternoon, I, I was asked to negotiate a deal that would have ruined one of this country's oldest buildings. I could not believe that the, the firm of Gutterman and Plantikoff were acting in good faith. I, re I realized that the very, very concept of being an estate agent... This is obviously an emotional scene, because we've all stopped... An emotional scene, but that's actually the thing, that's the line that really, really, really mullered it for Gary with any yeah, estate agent. I don't get anywhere. <laughs> Also, the word Mazeltov, you see on this card, you see the great attention taken in the, in the art direction, the production design there. Mazeltov, for those of you like myself who are Goyem, is that the word? You don't <laughs> use that word. You do <laughs> not use that. You know you don't use We've that got word. Start again. Don't call yes. oh. That's to be but Mazel Tov means congratulations ah. in Yiddish, I believe. Yes. So if you want to impress your Jewish friends, if you wish to congratulate them, you say Mazel Tov. Mazel Tov, exactly. Now Shall that, oh, is, this oh. is my flat. Here, and that's my Turkish coffee uh, baker. And this is uh, outside my flat. Oh, I, do you know, I really... really that's my Vinso so, on that the thing. That so... That night was so long. I, that, that one shot really sort of brings back memories of just... I'm terribly long. This is upstairs in my... Outside my flat. The flat upstairs. This brings back memories. I used to live here. I didn't live in this... Now, 
and then we're about to go inside to the uh, the co-writer's flat, Michael yep. Normand, as Gina closes the door here. Buff, Cut. look at that, seamless, straight into Michael Normand's flat. Yeah. How many miles away? About four. Well, yeah, yeah. Harleston. So what you do is you add up the number of crew members you have, OK? Mm -hmm. And then you write a film with that number of locations. It's the main reason for having a co-writer, isn't it? To be able to use his locations. Absolutely. Usually you should have three or four. Yeah. Bastards. Because the beauty of it is, 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 is with very small changes, if you choose the right location, you actually don't need to do very much to the location. Indeed. And how many flats did we look at for Leon's flat before Gary decided that the only flat that looked like Leon's flat... I didn't want a flat film crew in my flat. I don't know what. <laughs> and they brought bl bloody <laughs> bacon sandwiches no, no, in no, the No, 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 we didn't. In the they end, we, we took them over they a did. fence and then no, we brought them there was up someone, to the balcony. No, there was someone brought... Uh, one of the lighting guys brought a bacon sandwich actually into my flat and I had to get rabbis to come and sanction it again afterwards and clear it out. Can I just say, isn't wasn't Mark fantastic? Yeah, mm, it's amazing. It's just, it's a joy to watch. I like men to be adventurous. So funny in the film. Done things, climbed mountains. I didn't find him attractive personally. I want to go out with. No, sorry, I'll, I'll tell you, we'll, we'll abandon that one. I'm only saying that. No, he's a good looking bloke. I think we all find attractive. He's a good looking bloke. Gina's a good looking woman. Yeah. Gina, who's gone on to do loads of other things and was famous, of course, for Black Eyes on mm. television. Or by Dennis Potter. Thing, actually. Yeah. I don't know how to ride this thing. That was her famous line. I don't know how to ride this thing. She said about 15 times. Now, your mum's in the scene. My mum, my mother is in the scene. You, you'll, 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 you see her with the rainbow coloured jumper further down. Red and blue. There she is, just on the left. I can see her there now. Do you think people are actually going to watch the film? Or are they going to be looking to see like various relatives and stuff like yeah. that? Or... Well, the, they're all the people who are going to buy the film. This is actually a, a rare venture into South London during the filming and making of this film. This is actually the Streatham Mega Bowl, mm. which has not had not been that long open, in fact. Mm. And, um, oh, we won't mention that. Small technical problem, <coughs> which uh, we'll leave to you to work out. Hang on, who's Vadim's mother? No, not her. That's not no, your mother, no, is it, Vadim? That but, definitely is not your but mother. But you, those of you in the UK will reckon her, recognise her from this life. Went on to become quite famous. Don't you wish she was... No, that's right, I don't. Don't, don't go Not my that. life, this no, life. No, no. <laughs> this is just immature, childish sexual humour, and I don't understand how it made it into the film. Really oh, there's my mum, there's my mum, in the blue and, in the, in the blue and red. Stripey jumper, there it is, there it is, there she is, there she is, with the long hair and the glasses. There's more childish sex humour. We spent a long time getting the splat right here, quite yeah. warm. In Oh, oh, dear. Ooh, painful. And the hand coming up, that was the camera operator, Simon Maggs's idea. Oh. Ah, ah the famous man. man. <laughs> OK, now th this is a very funny story. Golden rule number two of low-budget filmmaking. Uh, what should we wait until we get the reveal on the back of the... Well, band? no, because, well, the golden rule number two is, of course, that, you, that if you have a, a featured v vehicle, you then use it for your crew. Mm -hmm. uh, can I just say, we'll talk about the van in a second. Do any of you know why it's called the Presum Medical Centre? Oh, oh, yes. Uh, do you think that might be an <laughs> anagram? Because <laughs> <laughs> it's sperm mixed up. It's sperm mixed up. Exactly. And this is now the film's about. Now the offices of QVC we're in now, actually, isn't it? Yeah. Yes, it wasn't at the time, it was the empty offices of... Uh, uh, people to look out for here. The, uh, well, hang on, uh, look, Paul Simkin. Paul Who, and then Paul Anderson, the director of uh, Resident Evil. Uh, shopping. Shopping. Not shopping and not that one, because we're not allowed to say that one, but he wasn't. Event Horizon. Event Horizon. Mm. Event Horizon Mortal soldier, Kombat. Yes. Soldier. And he is about to walk out of this lift. Um, with a, with an erectile on... dysfunction, isn't it? No, <laughs> premature ejaculation. Well, that's not... Here he is, in the, in the raincoat. Another childish sexual... Who wrote this script? Now... There he yeah. is, at the back with the black polo Paul Anderson there. You would have thought... And then this here is Paul Simkin, who I sat next to. Uh, I sat next to uh, school when I was a, a young child, and then went to Cambridge with. Mm. And he was still talking to you at this stage. No, but we paid him. I think we used the only. There he is, Paul. Hello, Gas. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think impersonations run out? Probably not. No. No, that's suitable as well, isn't it? Third floor, infertility. Did you ever have any concerns? Well. Actually, neither of you have children. So do no. you ever have... We never really discussed this. Do you have any concerns about no. being infertile? No. Never? No. It's just me, then. 
Anyone else have any? <laughs> so, yeah. Interesting piece of, of, of kind of OK magazine kind of trivia. Oh, what about the, the receptionist here is actually the daughter of Stuart Hall uh, of It's a Knockout fame. fame. How can I help you? Francesca well, you know, Hall. I never knew that. Did you not know? No. That? Manchester City supporter, like you, Gary. In fact. If I remember, she spent most of that day on our mobile telephone. Did she? Yes. Do you keep relevant oh. information? What do you mean, relevant information? Born so neither of you have ever worried about having a low sperm count, then, is what? It's just, OK. I don't know how you can get by like that. Just don't understand. Well, no, we don't have children. What was... No, but I mean, what would happen if you suddenly found out that you were unable to have children? Would that upset you? The whole film's predicated on this, guys. He must have been of some interest to you. You'd do something about it. Okay. You can adopt, can you? These days? I thought it was about peaks. Well, haven't you got anything to say for yourselves? I don't know what you want us to say. I, I like this scene. Yeah, it's one of my favourites. Yeah, it's actually in the trailer. So if you're watching the DVD and haven't watched the trailer yet, you'll see parts of this scene in the trailer. Are you joking? Didn't you go to university with most of these other brothers of Leon? <laughs> no, but they are all friends of mine. One of the things I liked about this was, was David the Kaiser playing the dad. Started off doing this thing where he said, we don't have, I don't want, uh, what's the line? Do we have to talk about this? And he kept doing it with his hands open like that. And I said to him, I'd like you to do it with a, a sort of George Bush-esque straight hand going, like, do we have to talk about this? Just like that. <laughs> Just like that. And uh, it was the difference to me between being a sort of stereotypical performance and actually being a, a more interesting thing. So I, because my dad does that basically. <laughs> because you felt it was strong, strong, not weak. Not just, weak, strong. We're also not doing impersonations. <laughs> like that. To procreate, how they do it is their business. Exactly. Sidney Geller's doctor commented that his patient's sperm count was one of the, the lowest he had ever encountered. Do we have to talk about this? We contacted the proud father, owner of Geller's Net Curtains Limited, and asked him how he felt. He replied... When did your parents realise this film was really just about that? I can't believe you spoke over that, that, that line. <laughs> I'm That's sorry. the big punchline. I'm sorry, I did I ruin really the punchline? Yeah, well, the people listening in. I don't know what you want to watch. watch the movie. They can rewind, can't they? Now you I don't know. The They're quoting that. He's quoting from the Jewish Chronicle, obviously, which is referenced a couple of times in the film. Okay. Which is the leading... The uh, well, we all know that. Mother. Mother. You want to be watching this in England. It's the leading Jewish newspaper. Only a white lie. Problems? Oh, oh no. no, do we have to watch this scene? <laughs> this was the last scene we shot at six o'clock in the morning in Edgware with the owners threatening to kick us out because they wanted to get the shop ready to open it in the morning and you can imagine we were all completely exhausted and we had so little time we decided to shoot it in one, in one take. take now this guy the chef here <laughs> lovely guy lovely but guy. every time he stepped up he got his lines wrong every time every time he stepped up this is like take 23 or something isn't it and it's one take you couldn't it's a shame we actually lost all the outtakes but uh, it was hysterical because he did it perfectly in the final rehearsal of course um uh, but interesting piece of a little anecdotal information cool he is actually the voice of parker in thunderbirds no he is he is the voice of Where Parker you in the Thunderbirds. Where did you trivia from? Because, I don't, you know, it's just... You know, Stuart it's just Hall's daughter is one, and Parker yeah. from Thunderbirds. Actually, that's running so late on this scene as well. I had a knock-on effect later on as well, didn't I? I'll get to that later. You're going to tell me that it's this guy on the left of the beard is Captain Scarlet or something, aren't you? No. No, it's his dad. But I don't have any children. Oh. Oh, what? Uh, the actor on the right is a, a chap called Stephen Greif, who... So lucky. Thank goodness we had him that day because he really he was, held that together. He, didn't he? he held the whole thing together by always remembering his lines, even though he'd been waiting since two o'clock in the morning to do this. I thing. think the chef got his lines right on take sixteen or something, but then someone else screwed up. Yeah, of course. It's it's uh, if you've ever seen the film Living in Oblivion by Tom DeCillo, this scene had all those classic kind of low budget filmmaking problems. You know, you're desperate to finish. They're going to kick you out of the location, and something wrong, something different would go wrong with every take. I also remember we were so tired that at we one fell point, asleep, I think, no, we? Simon Maggs, the camera operator, actually, we, we said, stand by, turn over. <laughs> fell asleep. We're waiting for the, the camera operator normally says, set or, you know, ready or whatever it is. Speed, I think. Speed or whatever it is. And uh, it was a silence. The problem is... He was actually asleep, we had to wake him up. But remember, we made this in six, six day weeks, didn't we? He didn't have a lot to do in the operation of this particular project. <laughs> no, no, no. But he, he did have to have his eye over the eyepiece. <clears throat> 
Right, now this shot, I remember talking to you about because we wanted to, this shot coming up now, we wanted to have a, a feel of Dustin Hoffman mm. walking oh. along the hotel That's corridor right. in The Graduate. We did one actually, of my favorite films. we watched The Graduate, didn't we, just before we shot it? Yeah, yeah. we did. No, and you'll, you'll notice on the soundtrack we've removed all, all the, the footsteps, all the sound. It goes silent as we are... Because we're nicking something that Shh, Mike Nichols no, did in the ground. No, no, oh, sorry, no, we're not. Mr. Keller? And then the sound comes down. It was. It's very effective, wasn't it? The whole so cinema the, would go yeah, absolutely quiet, dead. Quiet. Everyone yeah. would get very yeah. tense in that little section. Oh, now, do you remember that train behind there as well? Oh, yeah. Yes. What is a train doing on the first floor of this artificial yes. insemination yes. clinic? But well, we wanted trains going past, didn't we? But yeah. they decided to park one. I remember right, ringing them up to see if they could move it. And uh, British Rail so being British Rail decided that uh, they was quite happy where it was. Well, this was a very weird decision to use this place as the... I oh, know, it was a great decision. It was great. I, I, it was great. I, 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 Actually, I think we also no. blow more of our budget, location budget on this. It, it, did. it, cost, it cost us a lot of money, It cost us a £1,000, that did, oh, which, yeah. for that day. Well, which which is a third of the location <laughs> budget. Yes. Also, you'll notice this is a net Crosby from One Foot in the Grave. See, I read OK and Hello, so I know who these people are, Gary. Who's she the daughter of, then? She's not the daughter of anybody. Well, she will be, but... Yeah, but not anybody. The, um, so then this the mm -hmm. whole dilemma that he's yeah. in now as yeah. someone who has a lesbian or thinks he's got a lesbian yeah, doesn't have any relevance to you you don't feel at all concerned i'm going to keep talking about this I mean, as far as I know, I've never got anybody pregnant, so maybe I, I do have a low mm. sperm count. Yeah, exactly. That's the problem. That's the point. I think you should go behind that little screen behind us now at the moment, Brad. <laughs> take a little test tube with you, and we'll take the test in tomorrow morning. It doesn't take very long, sure. <laughs> so if you're looking for London landmarks, you can just see Battersea Power Station in the background. He said, <laughs> So a personal anecdote here was, uh, that, was that I was very nervous shooting this day. It was about the second or third day of shooting. And uh, I was very concerned that, that, that I would at no point during the first week not know what I was doing. I really wanted to be sure. So I planned every shot very, 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 very carefully to the point of, in my inexperience, actually explaining to Annette that I exactly what I wanted her to do on every shot. And literally, I want you to just stand up on this line, I want you to pick up the test tube on this line. And apparently, uh, about a year later, I met somebody who'd worked with her just after this, and, and she said, uh, so how was it, Annette, working with, with, with Adam and Gary? And she said, well, I've never been so thoroughly directed in all my life. <laughs> this is Bell Size Park. Very funny moment so at the, at the uh, okay? London Film Festival screening of the film. No. I was sat with Gary, and behind me, two people suddenly said, when this next shot came up, that's our house! At <laughs> <laughs> this 43 <laughs> Bell Size Park. You're gonna have to give me a lift home. This is Mariam Darber, come on, tell us. Mariam Darber, Mariam who Darber, is? Who was in Living uh, Daylights? Living, Living Daylights, Daylights. Mm -hmm. yeah, the, yeah, the Bond girl in the Living Daylights. She was on a cello, which is gonna feature... What? Yeah. In Leon. Yeah. Well, not the her cello. Mm -hmm. Don't you find that sort of and she flew all the way from America. She course. did. She flew all the way from LA to be in the film. She's profoundly unattractive too, don't you think, Karen? Oh, she's, no, she's not. She's very sexy, obviously. Uh, continuity error here. Oh, oh dear. Do you want to know why he's not wearing a tie? He's not wearing a tie because we only had one of the ties. We now that is bad, low budget filmmaking. <laughs> Only having one tie. We came up with a good much. solution, didn't we? Yeah. Well, no, yes. not to wear the tie at all. Yes. And it's in character because he, you know, wants to feel, you know, make her feel that we, we made would have done things. better to have two ties, I, I think. Simon windows, Hicks, the production yeah, designer, made these stained glass windows himself. Lovingly, yes, we him. had a lot of discussion about that because his view of what an attractive woman was was completely different from mine. We kept having to <clears throat> rework the stained glass windows for that. That Funnily enough, this was a, this flat actually belonged to somebody we knew as well. Yes. Every one of those belongs in my bathroom now, actually. Does it? Mm. What the stained glass window? This mural was really oh, on the yeah, wall. Yeah, that was fantastic. And I remember when I went when I visited this flat just before we started shooting, I remember seeing this flat and thinking, this is her flat in the movie. And it's so it turned out to be. Ugly, flimsy nylon that stops people from enjoying the window from both sides. Because people need their privacy. The whole beauty of the window is ruined. Is it I side with the people here who make neck curtains? <laughs> I, must say, I, I, I wrote that as lunacy, but I, I say I think neck curtains are a very good thing. Life, 
Very good thing. You never have too many neck curtains. So you've got shares and all. <laughs> You're lucky that's got an outside this. wall back there. You could do with an NHBC damp proofing course. <laughs> One awful minute there, you sounded like an estate agent. <laughs> yes, that's another reference to estate agents. Well, there's one thing I can't stand more than neck curtains. It's estate agents, trained liars, dishonesty incarnate. I can't stand dishonesty. So what do you do? I sculpt. Really? <laughs> I've always wanted to sculpt. Ever since I saw Rodin as a kiss. Don't you love his work? I find subtitles a bit off-putting. Now that's so, it. I love that joke, but you know what? Only there's only a certain kind of person in the yes. audience that understands that joke. You know, you can judge the kind of intellectual level of your audience by whether or not they laugh at that. Food? Food? You mean your sculptures are edible, and if it doesn't get eaten, it goes off. Oh, fishies. See, we did this scene before it was in Romeo and Juliet. Yeah, absolutely. What did remind you of? I'm not sure. But, but, <laughs> no, but, but after it's in The Graduate. <laughs> stop motion. In The Graduate? Or I'll start talking about sperm counting. Your male fertilizes them after. My mother, definitely. <laughs> this is me, the voyeur. Can we get another one of those sound effects that we're so fond of? Ah, uh, now this was about the first shot we did, actually. Yeah. Yep. Coming up. No, 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 first we have... Coming up, No, coming no, no, up, no, 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 first we've got this, oh. the lobster. Oh, mm. yeah, of course, Mr. Lobster. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Mm. I think that, was that us going, mm. I forget. Yeah, but it's the, it's the non, any non-kosher food in mm. the film has that, mm. Mm. Yeah, but did so. we go, mm. or did we get someone else here? No. Mm. Or no, was no, it a creative? Yeah, mm. oh. Oh, first shot of the film, coming up. Yeah, it was first day, March the 9th. There we go. We did. Well, uh, then, oh, I think even then, the genius of what was to come was so... Ah, there we go. She, uh, what was her name? The girl on the left? She was going Sarah, out with a friend of ours, though. Yes. Sarah someone or other. Mm, Sarah. And the guy on the right is actually a Scottish actor, Martin Ritchie, who um, actually um, sent me... What did he send me? He sent me his CV recently, okay. actually. I was determined to get golf in the film somewhere. Oh. Um, this seemed like the, the obvious place. I don't think <laughs> that is quite an outrage. <laughs> <laughs> look at that. It's embarrassing, really. Isn't it? yes. It's very embarrassing. Whose idea was that? <laughs> that was, uh, oh, was that trouble picture Michael Norman Christ. must have been. Why does he always have a beard? Cheap sex jokes. It's beautiful. Yeah, it's not bad. I've often wondered about just giving him a moustache. Are you hungry? People got quite offended, didn't they, occasionally, Starving. about the, uh, the Jesus mm. thing. I don't think so. Oh, yeah, look, like this. great bit of action. Oh, there. Simon Scott! Oh, look, at that. look, the associate producer! <laughs> the Fantastic Wallet like hairstyle. Style. And this is the one and only Neil Malarkey. Yeah. A stand-up comedian of, of great fame and one-time partner of Michael Myers. Who? Mike Myers. Oh, Remember that who? guy? He was in uh, oh, what was that film? Um, uh, Austin, Austin Rover? Austin Healy? Is he staring at Austin Powers? Now, <clears throat> it was only when we finished the film that we realised that this scene was a little bit more mm. <clears throat> disgusting yes. than we thought of yes. it. Because she has said in the Isn't previous scene mm -hmm. that she's <clears throat> having her... I don't know if this is relevant to this discussion. Well, it probably but is. We, we had said, she has said that she's having her period. Jesus, what a question. Um, and anyway, I, I think someone's telling us to shut up, but it's... it's how you talk. Are we not allowed it's to mention periods? Well, no, periods. she has said that she's having a period. And then uh, she says she's got to go to the loo and she says she's not wearing any knickers in it. Well, a bit oh, absurd, maybe, but I hadn't noticed it when like we were writing it. It, seemed it was a while ago, though, wasn't it? Well, Young and naive, I think. Can I say, we didn't in the know ten what? years since <laughs> we made we this don't film, know. I've never Let's face it, guys don't know. We've got no idea. Not yet. I must go to the loo. Great dress. Super great dress. And this this is a, one of my favourite yes. shots. How have you noticed it's Le Pierre <laughs> What? The Pierre d'Or. It yeah. must have been product placement, don't you yes, think? I think it was. Actually, people were pretty generous to us. They were. So, 
In fact, this Lobster was a restaurant Tony called Dog. The Brixton in Common Garden. This shot, I think, that's is is a great right. shot. The way that it pulls focus and stuff is really. Now, am I to take it that Sir is Jewish? That's right. Strict and kosher. Hasn't told her though. Can't say I blame him. Edgar, what a shame! Ah, uh, there goes the lobster now. He's a fighter, this one. <laughs> it's still time. Tell her. Tell her now. Something wrong. And then we have coming up, I think, the cardboard cutout lobster <laughs> shadow, which we got away with. Little man down the bottom of the stairs waving a cardboard cutout of a lobster. <laughs> Now, Mark actually did eat this lobster, didn't he? But he wasn't kosher. I don't know. Was this the same but lobster that was, that was swimming around in the tank earlier? No, no, no. no, 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 no. Well, they brought it with them. Well, no, 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 I think, no, I think in, 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 real in, life. in real life, like in no, filmmaking. No, 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 this came from some, some different... Look at the way that the parsley drops in the so that's very nice. But he actually did eat this lobster. This, anyone watching this, actually, who's kosher, you, I've seen people squirm in the cinema. Really? His acting is so good in this. I mean, he used to love eating all this stuff, but I can't stand watching it. It's unbearable. In fact, didn't Mark and I both oh, deliberately no. eat the lobster on a plane with you? Yeah, he did. Provocatively, I he think. He did. They're never doing it. Oh, disgusting. Look, it's shiny and it's a claw. I don't, now, which lobster is that? Is that? I don't even know, but... Ugh. What kind of lobster is that? Because there's two types, isn't there? They're like, dead. Yeah. No, there's crayfish or something. Ugh. No, it's lobster lobster. You see, that's Such had a, a tiger for it. Yeah. Such a good compliment of the ass. Well, thank you. <laughs> what, what is it? Pork. Mm. Okay, okay, you win. Ugh, trotters as well. Disgusting. <laughs> yeah, I'll go on with you on that one, actually. I'm Jewish. <laughs> Can you take this away now? You're Jewish? Look, I'm sorry. Daddy hates Jews. Look, I've said I'm sorry. <sighs> There's quite a deep thing going on here in the film because this non-Jewish woman actually gets excited by the fact that he's Jewish because her daddy hates Jews. I know, it's too deep for you. <laughs> yeah. But it is, it is, it's sort of like a rebellious nature. Anyway, you find that quite often with some people. Like, you know, you see Jean-Marie Le Pen's daughter will probably go out with a Jewish poet at some point. Uh, Gary shouted at me when I was using this. Oh, well, because it took so long. I was enjoying myself. <laughs> I, I, I thought they seemed to be enjoying themselves really? as well, and I felt it was unfair, really, to... Now, oh. shall we at this point confess that we also tried to steal this from the graduate? <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, this no, whole we sequence, tried to, you we mean? tried to emulate. Yeah, well, those seamless cuts. It's an homage. But... Yes, it is on my So that sequence thing. in The Graduate there's... where he dives in the pool and lands on the bed and... Yeah, there's actually only one of them that I think comes off perfectly, which is the one with the underwear. <laughs> this one, you mean? Yeah, that comes off pretty well. It does, doesn't it? Mm. Yeah, but it has a... Yeah, it's nice, it's an irony. Between the relationship with the non Jewish woman. So what parents. was in that alcove behind there? There must have been something in there that we didn't uh, like. Oh, yes. No, they must have. Been. Well, there's a light there to highlight something. Much as the film has certain personal resonances for me, I've never actually been put on a cross. No? But people no. have tried, I would <laughs> <laughs> Since, I think. <laughs> I just want to point out that the cross wasn't actually in that flat. We did put that in ourselves. Yes. What does it in re stand for then? No, oh, look at that. <laughs> I know what Mazel Tov King, what does King of the Jews. There you go, you see? You didn't know that, did you? No, what is it? But it must King be Latin. King of the Jews. King of the Jews. Yeah. Well, what is it? Hold on then. King of the Jews, I think. I, I never quite understood what is this kinky sort of fascination with rubber gloves? I when, don't know. I, I mean, don't is, understand. Is that no, made up, Gary? Yeah, right. <laughs> Given the choice between handcuffs, and I think someone wants... Anyway, yeah, no, we're not getting personal here, are we? No. So are these some of the most difficult scenes to shoot? 
ja, menneskelige. I rang you last night. I was out. At four o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Now the scene coming up. Well, well, should we call individually the people who are involved? Yeah, absolutely. It's Michael Norman's the co-writer is about to feature. Uh, in the beginning Only of the scene, the and there's Marla Altshuler, yeah. who's the daughter of the executive mm. producer. Uh, my agent, agent, Steve mm. Kennis, yeah. my mother. Okay, uh, let's see if we can point them out. Oh, we can't. Well, here's Michael Norman coming up first up, Scottish accent. Co-writer, co-writer, that's co right. co that's right. That's right. That took us about 15 yeah. takes to get that that's right out of him. Yeah, that's right. This. I'm in the He's background. He's being followed by the investor's daughter, yes. David Archuleta's daughter. And that's Mara my mother Archuleta. there. That's my mother in the white there. Yeah. Yeah. Just right there. And that's a guy called Robert Gutterman. This is my agent. Yeah. And, and that's David, David Archuleta. Archuleta again, the co executive producer. Yeah, all getting starring roles. And everybody else in the scene paid to be there. Not us, I hasten to add. Paid the, uh, a Jewish, Jewish charity. charity. A Jewish charity. So we made a goodly amount of money out of this. £3,000. Yeah. yeah. Paid to be in the film. I'm actually uh, still friendly with a lot of these people. Twelve engagements this week. Decent girls. Not like that kitten you're humping. Hi, Rabbi Fink. Now this guy runs the 606 <laughs> Jazz Club on Lots Road in Chelsea. He does. And he was also captain, uh, the captain of Stingray. No, he's not. <laughs> he did not. He was also the robot in Fireball at 12 times. Subsequently to this, I actually went to Gary's sister's wedding, and, and it was exactly like this. Nigel Savage, Rick Dummer. We actually recorded some music here by Rabbi. We, some, we trained the rabbi. rabbi he's a particular Shlomo tune. Kulbach, yes. Yeah, and we thought it was folk music. And then he sued us. So yeah, he did yeah, Rabbi Kolbach. Because mm. um, you told us it was traditional. <laughs> I told us because I kept hearing it at weddings, so I thought it was traditional, but it turned out it wasn't traditional. It was written by Rabbi Kolbach, who's an immensely well known songwriter, sadly deceased now. But and could we just point out? Said, oh, no, 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 it's, no, 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 no it's Gary. Gary. It's Gary. 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 It's Gary. Gary's, Gary's no, no, getting no, married. Talk, talk there you go. We, we passed through that quite happily. David Blakeman. More friends from Manchester. <laughs> Mother volunteered me as bridesmaid. <sighs> hey, how come they haven't played? Sure, it's at London Zoo, I recall. Mm. Mm. This is London Zoo's ballroom. That's Ray McVeigh in the oh, background. Ray, Ray McVeigh's wedding band. Can I just point out for the owners of this video, uh, the releasers, distributors of this video, that the, the, the tracks are now cleared? Yes. I just want to point that out. Yep. You're not going to get chased by a rabbi from New York. That's Liz Cohen's parents. That's right. People aren't going to be interested in this, are they? <laughs> and and, and th this is Leon, who is the star, you know, the star of the film. Who's this actor? Then? Ray Boot. This Ray Boot. Is, yes. yes. But good. Yeah. yeah. But good. Yeah. The no, 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 I don't know why people think it. I think it's a wonderful song. Um, He's got to be about the most successful wedding band chap, isn't he, Ray McVeigh? Well, very successful. Oh. And here we're going back into Michael Norman's flat, the co-writer. And, you know, he didn't wash the sheets for a number of weeks afterwards. Really? Yeah. Because well, Mark had been sleeping in it. <laughs> <laughs> but also could be conspiracy like or, 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 or Gina. Or Gina. Ah, so this is the double trouser scene, isn't it? It certainly is. Very often when you're making a film, you, you, you realise a huge continuity error has just crept in. But usually you realise it a long time after you've finished <laughs> it. Well, there's one of those coming up here. Hello. Hi. Really? Can I call you back? Who was that? Watch the trousers very carefully yes. here. Yes. There we go. We're going parachuting this afternoon. Have you ever jumped? 
And there they go oh, again. There they go again. <laughs> I it just get, think that's normal. Worse, I, that never it offends because I think it's fair to wear a couple of pairs of trousers sometimes if it's chilly outside. <laughs> it can be very useful, Lisa. Oh, there they go again. No, 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 wait for it. No, don't tell me. He doesn't pick them up again, does he? You'd better be going. No, his trousers are on. Oh, no, it's only the other ones. I thought it was twice for some reason. Leon. I won't feel guilty if you don't. Done. How many times have you used that line, Gary? Well, <laughs> well done. Done. <laughs> no, well, many, the, many I, no, no, no. I no, don't feel guilty if you don't feel doesn't guilty. doesn't reflect on my life at all. I've never had a relationship with a Jewish woman. That's the outside of my flat till I got married. That's the outside of my flat there. Uh, in Chatsworth Road, for those people who want Excuse to go and visit. Me. Kilburn. How do you feel? Uh, Bronsbury Park. Guilty as hell. <laughs> so you sure? Kilburn. <laughs> Bronsbury Park. Bron you two-timing bastard. By David Street. Yeah. I don't know if you know this, but the line... Oh, uh, Bert, oh, no, Bert Quark. Bert Quark. <laughs> None other than... Ketar. Uh, Ketar in the Pink Panther films. There's no pain, no pain, no guilt. I tell you, the one thing I really wish we'd done... This line, come on, go, this, line? this line is a steal from Julie Burchill. Don't, uh, Gary! <laughs> what? No, I you read about it. Julie Burchill actually said that line, and I thought it was so outrageous. I picked it up and put it into... Uh, compared to uh, Jewish men, non-Jewish men just seem like dead meat. Excuse I thought it was an outrageous thing to say. Uh, I guess, so I gave it to, to Maradona. Sorry, say, but... Two women in less than 24 hours. That is a good title. No, I'm referring to you. <laughs> you, you think I don't feel guilty? Don't get me wrong. The other thing you'll notice about this scene is that it's done in as few shots as possible. This is a technique that we developed, <laughs> again, because we had no money and it was no really quick. White lies. Look, was all the artwork in there we had to create ourselves. In we about did. And I really regret that we didn't really do this exhibition. Like it. it doesn't look no, like it. No, it doesn't. looks like it's worth a million well, dollars. It, does. Have you been to taste? it would be now. Yeah. I, I think I really wish we'd kept this exhibition open. My particular favourite, I think, is coming up. It's yes. one that's called Woman, which is two hubcaps <laughs> and a my black hubcaps. triangle. <laughs> They're my hubcaps from my car. No one told me they'd stolen them. My friend Simon Phillips messing around with the tyres. <laughs> Very intense. <laughs> there they go. Look, two <laughs> hubcaps. That's woman. That is. Leo, Elliot, how are things? Fine, fine. Well, what are you doing here? I'm afraid I can't say. Business. Business. Uh, no, not with the telly. The Dickens deal fell through. He's very keen on that leisure centre. It's either this place or the Tate. <laughs> 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 he liked playing the scene. He did. He did. See ya. Interesting texture. <laughs> yeah. What is it? Sperm. How are you? Nervous. Well, of course, of course. That's only to be expected. Can I get you a coffee? No. Tea? No. Have you got the results? Well? Don't you think a sense of humor is very important in life? <laughs> <laughs> I do. Oh, oh, my God. Well written, Gary. It's good. Oh, my God. I've failed. <laughs> Seeing the funny side of things is the only trait mankind has. The animal kingdom doesn't. I can't have children. Your sperm count is fine. Really? Well, this is below normal, but nothing to worry about. Really? <laughs> so when your first child arrived, Gary, How much do you know was that a relief? Insemination? It's all right. Is that a pun? <laughs> no, I've got, I've got all that out of my system. <laughs> oh, here we go. I mean, my this father is, is my father, crucial. and my mother is my mother. Please sit down. <laughs> I like the way he goes out of frame, though. I remember we were very keen to do that. You're going to laugh at this. <laughs> You're going to find this very funny. I know you will. What? What do you see? 
two test tubes. Any differences? Not, not really. Exactly. What do you mean, exactly? Your what is the stuff that's in a bottle that's supposed to be in us? Wax, thank you, Simon. Wax. <clears throat> the only way... Uh, anyway, changing the subject, these are actually hiking water bottles. Mm -hmm. I've still got one of these as well, actually. Long with all the ice in the bottle. So what we could have said, actually, at the end of the film is no sperm was harmed during the making yeah, of the film. Yeah, we could have. But I don't know, me and Brad and I haven't got any children, I mean... ...contains the frozen sperm of Mr. Brad Chadwick, Lower Dinthorpe, Yorkshire. It's a sort of crazy mistake that should never happen, but does. One in a million. You mix them up? <laughs> Fantastic. You mix them up? <laughs> One day you laugh. Well, how could you do that? Oh, you're fine on your genetic tampering, mixing a buttock up with a daisy, but you can't pick up the right bloody test tube! Science is not to blame. This was human error. We only discovered the mistake today. Mistake? Thankfully, we got it right with your two brothers. Well, strictly speaking, half-brothers. Chandwick! I just don't know what to say. Dad, a one in a million one day, you'll... Don't give me any of that one in a million. They got the test tubes mixed up. I can't believe it. Bert Chandwick! Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> so good in this thing, yeah, yeah, I think. David DeCaro. Safeguards. All of a sudden, you're a biology expert. Damn it! I am trying to get to the bottom of this. If you haven't anything constructive to, yes. Do we want to play canasta with the Scheinfeld? <laughs> Do we look as if we want to play canasta? <laughs> oh, I mean, I'm no scientist, but how could they do such a thing? I mean, they froze it, didn't they? I presume they kept it in the fridge. Did they put it in the wrong section or what? Look, Dad, I told you what happened. And you're sure they didn't make the same mistake with Nat and Harvey? Well, that's something. That's right, just me. I don't know what to say. I just don't know what to say. What did they think they were doing? Have you developed this type of thing, walking out of frames? Well? Uh, well, yes. I like that. I like that. It wasn't stolen from Woody Allen. It was stolen from Woody Yes, it was stolen from Woody Allen. Beautiful. But we only stole from other <laughs> Jewish films. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, I we stole from quality. I'm yeah. going to show. Did anyone notice at the time? Me, they gave the no. Uh, oh, Derek Malcolm. Can't you say it? Well. Sperm. Sperm. You've it. got another man's sperm. My God, Didn't he tell us we should never make another film ever again? I think that's a bit much. No, I think he called, no, actually, he was more complimentary. Mm -hmm. I was reading back through the reviews. Yeah. Raises his son. Season for his permits. Gets him his first golf clubs. And then finds out he isn't even his own son. Of course he's our son. I don't know what to think. Is he Jewish? Well, thanks a lot, Dad. Maybe you'd like to charge me for 20 odd years of back rent. Interesting thing here is that he <clears throat> he is Did Jewish. So is his mother's no, Jewish. Absolutely. I've got to tell you something. I need to talk but to you. Dramatically, it doesn't help our story to say that. No. 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 So, so wasn't it? I thought it was always referring to Chadwick. Was the Chadwick Jew? They mix up no. The no. no. His son is Jewish. No, no, is he Jewish? Ah. What do you mean by that? They, anyway, my father, my dad. Jesus, such a mess. But I've decided, you see, my real father. My real father is. Elliot? Leo. Hi. <laughs> that is a very bizarre concept. <laughs> How long do we have to stay up there? What, in the film? Well, well no, in reality. Reality. in reality, when we were filming this. A beardless Christ. I mean, that must have been pretty hard work. It's yes. not long enough. Okay, all right, so... Um, it's nothing to what Jesus so actually what? had to go through, let's face it. Not so long ago you were. What's the big deal? Allegedly. Oof, hello. Hello, Sculptor. Sculptor. Leon. He's a caterer. Listen, can you get me down off this? Have you? Have you two? Uh, not yet. Not ever. Hey, but I spent hours on this bloody thing. Too bad. Caterer. I'm working with my mother. It's only temporary. Well, you could have worked for your father. Selling neck curtains. Okay, okay, I used to be an estate agent. And my family run a neck curtains business. And, and, and I'm not a sculptor, and I have been working for my mother's catering business. But these are all small things, Madeleine. Are you even Jewish? 
Well, <laughs> that, that, that's what I have to say. We're meant to just sit here and laugh at our own No, I, I don't know. No, I think we should be saying more. Yeah, interesting thing is, in, in, no, no, interesting, interesting. Uh, I'm quite impressed that you managed to wear a tie uh, in this scene. Mm, the one tie that we had. I think one of the interesting things is that Mark and Vince work, as actors, work completely different ways. Mm. Vince would always be best on his final rehearsal, and Mark would just get better and better and better by the take. So you always had to shoot Vince first to get his <laughs> performance and then do Mark's close-up. If you do the Janice other way around, said we should have put a scream on that. She was right. Was mm. she? Yeah, she was absolutely right. We mm. should have put a scream on it. And I think it was me that said no, so I apologise. OK. Apology accepted. Do you mean we missed a laugh there because of that? Yeah. Have you got a minute? I like this. It's a bit difficult. This is very funny. I'm having a Buddhist evening. Buddhist evening. Jeremy's coming. Jeremy? Jeremy Stein. And David Goldberg, you're more than welcome. <laughs> so typical of my friends. <laughs> really? Buddhist evening and no, nothing but juice. So. Yeah. But What's up? Very typical of my It's a long friends. story. Well, I told you about the clinic, about the artificial insemination. Well, now it turns out that they oh, made a mistake. Oh, it'll have to be another time. I'm sorry. Let's talk tomorrow. The Lisa. chanting is all us in yes. the big theatre. And now we're getting another song from Thomas Lang. Yum. Yeah. Now, these guys had never, ever written any music for film before. <laughs> no. No. And since this film, have never stopped. And he's got a great voice, Tom Lang. Yeah. Nothing ever goes to plan. You can spot the number plate changing on the car if you like, but that's yes. a bit nerdy. I was very upset that after the, the first sort of rough cut screening of it, the, our accountant came up to us and I said, what do you think? <laughs> he said, well, did you have two cars? Yes, it was the only, <laughs> the only, the only, the only comment point. after a year of hard work. And just did we have two cars? Didn't we split you two? Oh, everyone goes here. Yes. No, yes. Everyone goes. I know that corner. That's Staples Corner. It is. No one knows this corner because no. this is a bend somewhere. This was somewhere all the way on the back from Yorkshire, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Now, we had a joke coming up here that we actually yes, had to cut out yeah. of the film. We tried to make it work. Yeah. The car appeared, it's supposed to appear twice on top of the same hill, using the identical Ford Fiesta. Yes, exactly. Yes. Oh. Which is why we had two. It was a very surreal joke. There yeah, you go, there we go. Yeah. But it took, it took about half an hour for this <laughs> car to get down to the bottom and then reappear at the top. Oh, it's your final fact. It's my final fact again, yeah. Did you find anything interesting in there? It was quite Well, he looks like it. It was, it's such a shame to lose this joke, but take, it would have added half an hour to the film to actually see the car disappear down the bottom left hand screen and then reappear at the top again. The joke was, of course, that he was lost. It was in, yeah. and nobody laughed. Nobody it? laughed, <laughs> no, but in fact, it was the only joke that I found funny, no one else did. This I like. And I think I'm holding the next sign. You are? I think I'm holding the bottom of this sign. Oh, stop it wobbling. Yeah, stop it wobbling, yeah. That's direction. Yeah, there you go. That's me down there somewhere. But it's actually still wobbling. You didn't do a very good job, <laughs> It was Derek. very windy. It was very, very windy. You just pointed out, you know, you just spoiled the whole film for people. They're going, oh, that's not a real sign now, aren't they? Great, well done. Oh. Uh, Th this spot. actor was in Chariots of Fire. Did you know Excuse that? Me? <laughs> He was. he was. He was a bloke on the quayside in Liverpool, which is where they shot it, although it wasn't supposed to be in Liverpool. It's a lovely flock you've got there. <laughs> You're a city type. I suppose so. I thought so. At least you didn't hoot your blasted horn. Take the second turning on the left. The film starts to take off now. Yeah, 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 yeah my favourite section of the film. The film is the bit we always used to go to for film festivals. <laughs> we used to make sure we were there. It was from the moment they are arrived at the Chadwick's Big Farm. It was interesting because just before we made the film, we thought there was a chance we'd get some money from a French distributor called Francis Busflug. And uh, I remember when he read the script, he didn't like the script from here to the end. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> 
He's now running. Um, he's now running a very important. He's now the head of not cannot do for one of those things. He, he, he's very funny. He, he came no, he into the meeting. Warner Brothers he runs Warner Brothers. Yeah. Well, he he he, uh, he came. I remember him this vividly because he came and sat down and he said, "Before we do anything else, I have to ask you: Are you the son?" And I thought for a minute, "What does he mean? <laughs> he means, am I the son of Roger Vadim?" Oh. And I thought for a moment. I thought for a moment, and I said, "No." He said, "Oh, it's a pity because if you're well, the money would be no problem." <laughs> As it happened, the money was a huge problem. Mm. That's yes, why we're yes, here. Yes, yeah. We well, actually made this film for £150,000. £153,000. Sorry, I, I excluded your salary. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's probably you got paid nothing, didn't you? No, no, no. Everybody got paid. Everybody got paid that one pound. One, one pound, pound to sign right. their contract. I still haven't had mine. Hold on. No, I, I, opted, I opted not to take mine as well. Right, OK. Come on. Well, have you got that pig farm as well? 1867. Thank you very much. 1867, yeah. Ah, well, oh, the I'd wonderful Brian Glover. Thank you, you very shot. much. I, I impossible. What a welcome surprise at any rate. Uh, I remember the day like it was yesterday. All this is a very before. surreal scene. <laughs> <season. laughs> we surreal. had a lot of fun with this. Five quid I got. In those days, that was a lot of money. For those who are interested in the movie trivia that I keep June throwing into the equation, <laughs> he's... Uh, Brian Glover's name as a wrestler yeah. was Leon Aris. So the freezy, you know I did know that. And it's one of the reasons why he thought I have to do this times. Oh, I did know that. Yeah. No, Leon, you, eh? Aris, Beckett, <laughs> the pig farmer. Brian. Dark. I remember also saying that his salary on Alien 3 was um, considerably more than our entire budget for the film. Yeah. Brian Glover got paid more on the Alien 3 than the cost of this film. <laughs> Next to her is uh, Keith. Now my yeah. youngest son. Sean Pertwee. Sean Pertwee. Keith likes son to of cool. Doctor Who. Wants to go off on some for that, eh? blue <laughs> continental cuisine cookery course. He has much France. less hair now. <laughs> Maybe now he won't thank you for that. Are you planning to be friendly with Sean? Rock bloody four bloody and also subsequently flare. appeared in... And Collie Booth. Yes. From Faulty Towers. You, she won't thank me for that. <laughs> what am I talking about? Judith. In Sydney. I've always admired the way Jews believe in the family. That reminds <laughs> me, where was I? Then there's Keith's mother, Beryl. Oh, who's she? Beryl was my first, first wife. Ah, uh, no, these are all from the local Amdram Society up yeah. in, yeah. up in Lancaster. Yeah, they? Next to Yvonne's sister, Jane. They were good. I thought Jane's they did a really good job. Jane's ex-husband and fiancé, John. Peter the vet. Peter, our vet. My second ex-wife, Cynthia, with her new boyfriend, Trevor. <laughs> Keith's girlfriend, Kathy, And Kathy's teenage son, Luke. And that's just about it. Oh, that was one of those shots where you had to take the table out. And we did, well, actually, no, we didn't. We cut a hole in the table. Did you say? Did we take the table out? I and cut the table. Yeah. Became a we, square that's table right. That's right. That's right. We made the table, but we cut a hole in so the camera could go in the middle. So you, go all the way around. you see, I don't believe in forcing my pigs to breed. This was based on my personal like experience. Each other. Whatever you go to, they might not fancy each other. Or if they do fancy each other, house. they might get mm. emotionally involved. Things, you know, first of all, there would you never see, be locks on the bus of getting a cell pregnant, later, which is annoying to me because I like them, at least one or two Quick. chub locks on. on any bathroom door. It's a do pre yeah, yeah, that's a prerequisite. And it's also, they'll always day. invite their ex-wives around and stuff like that. Which, you, if you're a couple of a Jewish family and you get divorced, yeah. you basically, you know, never see them ever again. as a point of principle. Whereas everyone who's non-Jewish seems to get on very well. <laughs> Sorry, it was, that was, it was an it, observation. What can yeah. I say? Just a little observation. That was by. Does that spoil the film for you? Let's talk about sperm instead, <laughs> Adam. You're worried about your sperm count? No. Okay. No. Wakey, wakey! Time to get up! You see, now oh. the other thing about non Jewish people is they get up very early in the morning, <laughs> and I like a lion. I do. I like a lion. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I'm not convinced that that's a genuine... No, the Protestant worship ethic does exist, but, uh, yes. It does it exists amongst farmers. Hmm. Oh, yes, yeah, definitely. Yeah, farmers. Farmers. Oh, this bath. Plumbing it in. Plumbing it in. The time it took to fill or empty said bath. Because this actually wasn't a house at all. This was this was some youth hosteling association. It was a hiking lodge, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Owned by the University of Lancaster. Right. Well, we were in uh, somewhere in Clapham. Clapham Bridge. Yeah. Yeah. Near Settle. Right. Near Settle Down Cafe. And where did we stay? From Lancaster University. Lancaster University. Yeah. 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 No lock on the door. No lock on the door. On the door. 
So then you just realised he's, he's, he's neon based on you, Gavin. <laughs> no, I'm just I'm uh, identifying no. with the lead character in the film, Leon the Big Fun. Yeah. I think he goes too far here with his trailer. It's ridiculous. It's in fine with the wash basin. Now remember that that little hole that he came out of there yeah, was about, about two, two. Yeah. It's actually just, a cupboard. Yes, yeah, cupboard. That's actually get a in cupboard. There. Yeah, it was the two of them jammed in there. <laughs> also, if, for those of you who are fans of Piganalia, which is what we came to call it, <laughs> the, have you noticed the flying pigs on the wall? <laughs> yes. Which later get replaced. Around That's right. They get replaced. That's right. What's going on in here? No point in getting all spruced up. Pigs can smell cleanliness. See what I mean? Imagine them wrapped around your waist. He wasn't talking about my thighs again, was he? I, I can't remember. There you go, too. I've um, left some suitable clothes on your bed for you, Leon. They should fit. I mean, we need something right. to do. Kind know, of a, know, it's sweet, so sweet. It's a sweet little thing for him to do. Can I have a breakfast? I think we had a discussion about, you know, him indicating that he still loved her. You know? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I agree. How much she loved her. <laughs> into the cupboard. Into the cupboard. I <laughs> couldn't get in the front way. You've just ruined the film again for a load of people watching. It's well, that's why they're listening to the commentary. Non kosher food rumble. Just yeah. eggs for Leon. Sorry. No. Brian plays no, it very sympathetically, doesn't he? Mm. Uh, how would you like them, Leon? Wonderful. Scrambled with some thinly sliced smoked salmon. Or lightly poached with a sprinkling of fresh parsley. Boiled? <laughs> <laughs> right. Not the usual no sort of role for Sean Pertwee either. No, no. and, and he's, he's very good at comedy. No swearing. No. no. <coughs> so Doesn't kill anybody. No. Sensitive. Well, what's to be done nothing. at this hour? Feeding? Mucking out? Well, there's not a lot you can do with pigs till nine. <laughs> the lazy buggers. But it's good to get up early. <laughs> My father always up at four. And his father before him. We Chadwicks have always been early risers. You see, what I said earlier has just come true, hasn't it? On the film? Yes, 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 that's right. Good that's only because you wrote it. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? Major and Lamont divided on tax cuts. Mm. Surprise. Well, I suppose we'd best go and wake them up. Thanks, I want. So... When did you leave for Paris? A lot sooner than I thought. <laughs> no one gets that, do they? No one gets that. Uh, should we explain it? Guess what? Well, the fact that he, Sean uh, is happy because he's basically going to be leaving for yeah. Paris. Yeah. No one gets that. We're all so glad you came. Ooh. Pretty Yorkshire, isn't it? We had a, this is lovely, isn't it? Mm. People, you, people would gasp in the really? cinema when they saw this yeah. one. Because the rest of it looks so low budget. They were surprised. <laughs> the future. Yeah, you can afford all that scenery. Yeah. So, they thought it was a build. Pigs are actually kept here. We're just a bog standard farm. We're not rich, we're not poor, we're just right. This Product April placement the Land Rover. This is April the 1st. There. It was April it was the 1st. The first. This is we played a practical joke on the soundboard. Yes. You can tell a happy we're pig by the smell. Was, you see pigs pushed together, cooped up in tiny cages. I think I also threw the something. Look unhappy and the smell unhappy. On the head. And that <laughs> makes for an unhappy piece of bacon. This. We used to eat our dinner in that shed. Yeah, mm. we do, oh, don't remind me. <laughs> Freezing with those heaters. Those still heaters piling out hot air. <laughs> she stood and you didn't have, we didn't have enough of them as well. <laughs> Could we have got more? Would have been a little warmer. Oh, jeez. Oh, I'm not watching. I'll keep my eyes. Let me know when it's over. It's, it's over, Gary. Okay. It's over. <laughs> I shot too many of those, though, for Gary's work. <laughs> No, 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 it's not that, it's later. Oh, is it other pigs? No, it's the later when you did the, the pigs <coughs> in the top of the barn and wanted to shoot the big wide shot of pigs. Leon. Uh, I'm clean. No, Leon. I'm, I'm clean. Come on. Let's get you up. Let's... Uh, oh, 
remember the permits we had to get for that little piggy. Yeah. You have to get a movement oh, order for a pig. Mm. And there was even mouth is now kind of... Well, yeah, it was even before the mouth. This was a long time ago, but... Uh, and everything could only handle them for about a week. And then, so then they were actually sort of malleable and actually was sort of sitting in someone's arms. Gary's looking completely like Well, anywhere time the pig was anywhere near the film, I was like, you know, somewhere else, you know, in a corner somewhere. I, I thought you admitted eventually that it did look cute from a distance. No, that one, that particular one yes. did look cute because it was very small and yes. because it was soon to be bacon. Oh, right. But the others were horrible and big and smelt an enormous amount. Well, the smell, people underestimate the smell of a pig. It, the smell of that ammonia... Was, I mean, I, this entire shoot, I was wandering around with a car air <laughs> yes, strapped, you was. Yes. strapped to my nose, effectively, to stop myself from being sick. Because <laughs> you're from the town, you, you see. Oh. That's right. No, but it's not just that. But it wasn't it just pigs. sticks to your clothes. Pigs. You I mean, there weren't even any pigs in this park. Anyway. No, no, it, no, no, okay. it was just, you know, the general kind Two of stuff that comes pigs. out the back end of an animal. Nice. Was plenty. But if you ever actually go to a proper pig farm, as opposed to our fake very nice. farm, have you ever been? Yes. Yes. Pigs are lovely. I don't know what the smell was. Yes, four legs are so curly. They're not lovely, but they're, no, they're cute. No, they're and they're very clean, as Brian said, for in God, reality. For God's sake, don't they're highly intelligent. When are you coming back? They do use bits of pigs for human transplants, don't they? Mm -hmm. Soon. I'm not That's sure. Good about them. Mum? Yes. Not a word to Dad. I wouldn't know how to start. Yeah. Now, you see, you've got to look at Mark's reaction when he realises he's just shaking hands with a man who's had his hand up a sow. Wonderful. Isn't it? it's, all, it's all going on somewhere else, but Mark is still looking at his hand and thinking. You know, you know where the euphemism to have a screw comes from, don't you? Yeah. It's to do with the actual internal, of the internal organs of pigs. Oh. The, the internal organs or the well, exterior. Well, 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 the, um, Clump. well, the exterior one has to be the same as the interior one, otherwise you oh. wouldn't screw in and fit. Oh, dear. I've got to be at Lewis's at four. Oh. Now, this is... The sheep farmer. That's right. Well, should we tell people that there is no pig on the other side of that? Oh, good lord. No, it's, good, it's good acting, I'm good Very good acting. Good there acting from There is no pig over there. Can you find me the syringe? In fact, that's, that's Simon Scotland on the other side. <laughs> In patting. And take three drops oh, of the test tube that. on the left. <laughs> Got yourself a girl back in London? Not really. Got to find yourself a maid. It ain't natural not to have a maid. But the Lord said you shouldn't spill your seed on the ground. Three drops, no more, no and less. More wax, though. I don't know, I was just thinking about that. I don't want to turn the show off, I like the way it goes through his hair. Pass it over. Adds to the. Oh dear, oh dear. <laughs> oh, oh, dear. Oh, it always makes you cringe, that. Doesn't this, it? Uh, yeah, it does. That's oh, a very good impersonation of someone mm, yeah. inseminating a pig. Done. <laughs> it's the pig. This is the probably my favourite scene like. in the film. No, no, I do. I do. Who's your favourite? Well, I like uh, Trudy. Yes, Trudy. I also like to be seen on the trailer. And Belinda, and I know she likes you. Look, the All the pigs here are actually pigs. named after Michael Norman's ex-girlfriend. I don't know if that's... <laughs> people well, know that generally. Well, we actually gave... Because we did a deal with a prop house, didn't we? That where they would actually take one of those. They gave, we gave them one of these when we, we finished like the film. Sydney and Judith. In return for no, them lending us loads of the props. And actually it turned up again in one from the grave. Did you really? Yeah. Really? Darling, that's for Muslims. I didn't know that. We're talking about five that Muslim joke is going to play well after September the 11th? Persecution. I'll shut up guilt. again. <laughs> yes. So? We can try, can't we? Actually, it is the case that a lot of people who were um, Muslim More and sort. Hindu sort. and from sort of community, smaller communities hmm. who saw the film in, in London Still a bit came up and identified very strongly Keith, with it. are you sure you've got a mm. boiling file? Mm. Uh, no, it is actually the case. There it, it is, is yeah, no. mm, It is, well, genuinely the case. It wasn't just a sort of tourist scene film. Everyone, it was, came from a minority background. Yeah. Then, Keith, then, chicken soup is not some sort of new film. Although well, it is. It doesn't necessarily milk. identify with the chicken yeah. soup. But no. yes. Have you got some uh, fat? Not Sean another is making pitch. matzo balls, isn't it? Yeah. Matzo balls, yeah. Matzo what balls. For? Yes. Well, very tasty. Delicious. But you'll see them coming up in the... And 
it's got Rakus and Smetsamil on there. <laughs> and then this is little, this little bread is called Chola. Here, yeah, there's little twisted loaves. Is it? So it's sort of Jewish Friday night <laughs> bread. Love his face. Weren't look, the candles quite 14, important? Look at him, poor bloke, has to eat a mess of all. Just agony. Ooh, oh, dear, no, dear. Ooh, yeah. No, Brian, I identify with that. <laughs> ah, this is the film. This is the big day of my discovery. Now, isn't it true, this, this music which John and David wrote for us, which is called Jewish Transformation, subsequently you have found played at Jewish weddings you've yes. been to? Yes. It's really? Suddenly it's actually yeah. become oh, yeah. part of now the Jewish... And that, that chandelier had to come up from London. It did, it did from Christopher to, Ray's to, lighting To Yorkshire, because we couldn't find a chandelier that yeah. was in the least bit like it would be in a Jewish And house. indeed, I believe there's some sofas as well. We had a bit of a nightmare. Yes, they had to come up from London as yes. well. Because you can't get sofas like that in Yorkshire. Lucky Yorkshire. Or at least you couldn't at the time. <laughs> Now this is a joke that I think is the funniest in the film, probably, and only about ten people get it. Well, and just about everybody in New York. <laughs> well, the only one who's read Portnoy's Complaint basically gets it. And I suggest people go out and read Portnoy's Complaint, and then they'll understand the joke. <laughs> There's no pigs anywhere. No. There's no pigs anywhere. But that is pretty much what you looked like throughout the entire time you were in Yorkshire, wasn't it? <laughs> no, because I, yep. I had one of those car air freshers. It's very different from that. I'll tell you the story we never finished was the the uh, kosher the kosher van, oh, the catering yeah. van. Oh yes. So I said that we doubled it up for the, um, sound, guys. the sound guys used it to carry their kit around in, uh, but we kept all the Geller's kosher catering logos on it. So every night when they parked the van at Lancaster University. They'd wake up in the morning and have notes on it saying, could you tell me how much is it for half a pound of salt beef? Because <laughs> obviously there's a problem getting kosher. Yeah, so they, no one could understand why audience. there was no telephone number on the van either. Yeah. <laughs> so there was obviously a good business opportunity going there. Hi. Yeah, those sofas. I see Debbie Kaplan's engaged. Leon, I'm saying nothing. But you'll never meet the right girl if you don't look. This is the most stupid game. Right. What? <laughs> Tell him he needs to find someone and settle down. Do people really play this? Right. You know what you always need, Liam? Your health. Good health, you need. And a wife? Look, I have a girlfriend back in London. Leon! <laughs> well, why didn't you say? She's not Jewish. I knew it, I knew it! She is Jewish, she is. She, she, she's, she's just not really a girl. Good chandelier, is it? A great so chandelier. Who needs friends? You want a family? You want a home? Do we have to talk about this? No? No. 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 no one knows what new no was. And Sean you came up to me and said, what does new no mean? And I said, I need just a pretend holiday. like you just asked. <laughs> you don't, don't know what it is. So he didn't know what it was. What is it? I don't know. You it's just a usual word, isn't it? Yeah, it's a usual word. You just go new no, and it just means Need no. me. Well, we'll manage. <laughs> By the way, that Mark, I like that line it's Leon, he nice replicates his father's line. Yes. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So we have to, so we have to talk about it. Yeah, it's a very... With the hand action as well. With the hand action, exactly. It's a little slap on the back for ourselves there. Mm. Father inheriting the son's of Son inheriting the son's man. Now, how much did we spend on this uh, animatronic pig? Ah, well, of quite a fortune. And it was, yeah, why, it was why, most why, of the budget. We shouldn't have cut it out. I think no, we should have kept it in. should have kept it in. I don't want a pig. Pretty sure. You big debate amongst ourselves, you. actually, and the right and you and Gary, uh, you and Michael, wasn't it about is it a shig or a peep? Mm. Yes, it's a shig. It's a shig. Is it? Yes, a, a peep is something fine. completely different. Brian's going to take this part. And you also, know, we used to have a discussion about whether it was uh, half you gonna do? pig and half sheep. You thought that it was a yeah a pig up front. Yeah, yeah, yeah and it's not. I saw it was a woolly pig. Right. I don't know if you remember that, I thought yeah. it was a, a like, woolly pig. Like a completely combined. It's a, it's a pig with. Wool on it. That goes back. You expect me to wash and clean after you, but a holiday is too much to expect. Everything okay? Yeah. It's all right for you. You haven't been slaving over a hot stove all day. Neither have you, a schmuck of a son. Do you remember that little <laughs> a schmuck of a son? <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember, look, Brian, he was talking in rehearsal, he said, should yeah, I go schmuck or schmuck? <laughs> oi! Oi! Anyway, or, oi! Schmuck. Like that. For sure. Oh, it certainly was schmuck. 
Schmuck, definitely. I don't think it's really endearing that they try to become Jewish, though. I think it's really sweet, although it's bizarre. Either schmuck or it's complete. That's the whole point of it. You could be safe and go for Ludnik. Who would you say, Liam? Too Jewish. Look, you're just fulfilling stereotypes. You don't understand the fundamental concept of guilt. Without guilt, it's meaningless. Guilt isn't a word, it's... It's a way of life. Is that true, Gary? I think I agree. Oh. Everyone thinks that Sean's about to admit to being gay at this understand point. The concept of Have you guilt. ever heard that? Mm. I mean, not in real life, but the character. They all think... I used what is this? Uh, I think I do. They all think he's about to... Not having made the liver with pig's liver. Good. Ah. Uh, blue train. Green train, green train. Well, the train is going to come along to the different. On no, a low budget one... film, you can't <laughs> control the train. <laughs> this is an actual real train with two actors on it, and the train is. It's not. We don't control it at all. No, 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 no. We put the two rabbis. This is one on... of the two trains a day. It's exactly. What, yeah, absolutely. Only two trains a day to this station. The two rabbis actually got on at the station before, and they didn't hold the train for us. We had one go at it. Bernard Breslau, famous from the Carry On films. Pig farm? It's a long story. Sounds fascinating. Yes, it's the other scene is when we had to get the um, train back. We didn't know where it was. Having to radio down the line. And of course, mobile phones didn't work anywhere up in New York to work out whether it was the right colour train coming down the track. They weren't that film friendly in those days. No. Obviously, here we <coughs> implanted a camera inside the animatronic thing. Mm. Uh, one of the most famous stills from the film, this is. Yeah. This is used for the American poster. Well, yeah. Rabbi mm. Hersman? Although, what do you think? very, very sadly, now all, sadly, mm. all three of them sadly passed away. Yeah. Rabbi Jolson? Well, what? The only question is, will it taste like bacon? On the one hand, it must be said, this is a very difficult question. On the other hand, this is a very difficult question. Will it smell like bacon? Will it grill like bacon? I can't wait to tell my congregation. Very difficult. Kosher hands. Very clever, canny marketing idea to put in an American mm. character in the hope of getting an American distribution deal. Mm. Worked well. Yeah. yeah. Well? I'll have to consult the chief rabbi. Consult? All you people do is consult. It's fine by me. It's 100% kosher. With all due respect, there's a principle involved here. Principle? What principle? Believe me, there's always a principle. I'm reminded of the story of Noah. Who? You know, Noah, the flood. Oh, the flood. Yeah. We had a flood in our synagogue. What? The whole building flooded. That's terrible. Did you save the scrolls? Scrolls? We keep our service on floppy disk. With all due respect, you know nothing. You're also talking out of your ass. <laughs> no, floppy disk <laughs> probably dates the film, doesn't it? It, it does. does. Yeah. Yeah. At the time, it was, you know, very avant-garde, but now it would be I mean, CD-ROM. Yes, yeah, CD-ROM, yeah. DVD. Agreed. Honesty is the best policy. One lie begets another, as surely as no This is the other train. Yes. And Jaffet. And we, did, we had no idea whether or not this train would turn out to be the right colour. So that's how we got our actors home as well, just stuck up on the train. Yeah. That was the end. They went back to the station that they'd come from. But if it had been a green train, what's the big deal? He arrives in one blue train and leaves in a green no, train. No, it's because we shot half the scene in it. That's more like it, yes. And that actually station was Clapham and it used to be a junction. Did it? Yeah. What? It used to be Clapham Junction in Yorkshire. <laughs> yeah. Did you know that Alan Bennett lives in Clapham? One in a million. No. Yeah. Half a sheep, a mistake. But it wasn't his fault. His fault it wasn't. One of my pigs. Half a sheep. What's it look like? It sort of looks happy. It's getting on very well with the other pigs. I mean, what is its physical appearance? Some of it, a lot of it, most of it looks like a pig. But then there are these small things, hardly noticeable really, just minor, 
minor changes. Minor? You, you wouldn't get it. <laughs> I remember. Well, is what he should Brian have terrified me. Yeah. <laughs> right, we isolated from the others. You don't want him losing The only one of its kind, and when he dies, you. we go back to normal. I will not have crossbreeding. Ooh, you should have thought about that 30 years ago. What do you mean by that exactly? It was all right then in London for five pounds. Something good came of that. Something good. Do you remember they went off um, canvassing for the Labour Party because we shot you this? You will not. Uh, well, right. it, yeah. Uh, yes. yeah, but he took Collie really along with him. Did he? <laughs> yeah, she hated it because actually I don't think. Well, anyway, but um, <laughs> they went off together, to and uh, he came back. He had a few, few ripe words to say about the Labour candidate. Really? Yeah, he wasn't best pleased. You never think, do you? Pigs, pigs, pigs! Do you ever take me out for a meal? Thomas Lang again. That, that's the best bit of the film over, really, isn't it? If I were you, I'd switch <laughs> off at this point. No, don't oh, hang around for the no. no, but it's just that I, I love that whole sequence. And why did we have to come out? I think we should have cut the film there. Yeah, well, you run out of air fresh at the start. Oh, that's true. Do you think actually I'm sure should at have one settled? Point, do you think I you should have settled with the, with the No, comments? no, no. But I did, at one point where we did, Michael and I tried to write this for America because we tried to get the film made in America mm. through um, Eric Idle in the first instance. And uh, we had these meetings with Universal Studios went in and said, we want to make Leon the Pig Farmer. But they sort of shot us out very quickly. So Michael and I thought we should have, uh, we set uh, the whole Pig Farmer bit instead of in Yorkshire, in uh, the Florida Keys. <laughs> And we actually had a draft of the script that was set in uh, London and the Florida Keys. Ah, the vans that we nicked as well. Oh, right. oh product placement vans. vans. What? Thinking of breeding. Here we do the clutch on a couple of those. I think it yeah. was, this was the wardrobe department drove it I up tried. themselves XP. up to your horse. Express Parcel really Systems gave us three, three, four vans, vans. Yes. four vans to shovel everything around in. Absolutely. I went to university with this chap with the pipe. Oh, yes. No. Matthew. Yeah. yeah. He's like, never your right. Is that the same age as you? Yeah. Uh, uh, that, you, he looks young. No. Now, now this Matthew, Matthew is actually the presenter of a travel show. show. Yes, he was quite famous at the time for being Matthew a sort of... Collins. Matthew Collins. Matthew Collins, for being a guy that was just sort of told right one week where he was going to in the world and being stuck on a plane, so... Uh... And the guy who did the... Uh, the mouth organ, so this... Yeah. Well, Stevie sort of music, Wonder? Was, no, was a mafia guy, but John, I don't, don't, don't mention <laughs> no, it, I'll shut up about that as well. But he had a dead body in his boots, <laughs> apparently, while he was recording it. I don't know why he said that back then. I think you better tell <laughs> so me about it. Blame. Now, what do we use to make the bag move? It does, it does really no, it's the no, animatronic, no, animatronic pig. Oh, it was right. But when it wasn't the animatronic pig, it was a piece of nylon. Oh, uh, right. What do you think right. now? Uh, I suppose I have to tell I still parents. have those chicken soup bowls down there. Do you? Yeah. Do you still have that sofa? It's quite uh, nice. No, flat, I think I it? gave the sofa to someone else. I've lost that picture of the rabbi reading the book, which is a bit annoying. Mm. This here, yes. Nigel Savage, this guy. Hamalei, Hamalei Cozy, cozy Karate Child Lisa. Uya Hatin. Uya Hatin. That is actually uh, Urdu. Mm. Is it really? Yeah, so Nigel learned that you. very well. I think it's Sorry, Jeremy. Nigel playing Jeremy Stein. Jeremy. But he was uh, an investor in this. Oh, he and, he uh, raised some of the money, didn't he? Personally, went on to be executive producer of my next two producers. Look, we're having a 24 hour chant, so if you hear strange noises, hmm, I better be going. Thanks for the soup. What's that little piece of paper that he's got his finger on? I think it's an yeah. answer phone, I think it used to say. Something. Oh, yes. <laughs> it was my message, my reminder to myself <laughs> to put on my answer phone. Embarrassing. I'm so unhappy that I mentioned that. I see you. <laughs> I see you brought your laundry, as usual. Yeah. Is, uh, is, is Dad around? Upstairs. Good. C can we talk? Oh, in and out of frame again, Gary. Mm. Yeah. Do you remember when the film was finished? And every distributor in the UK said, 
No, to distributing it after we won those prizes. Mm -hmm. That's disgusting, isn't it? Good, it was all the film only got released in the UK thanks to the person who booked the films at the Hampstead Everyman Cinema. Yeah, with fortunately all the box office record. Yeah, but the guy at the screen on the hill said it wouldn't play two days in Hampstead. Yeah, he said he'd be down Wrong. in a minute. Wrong. Wrong. Which just goes to show it's very difficult being a filmmaker, isn't it? It is. And you should just keep persevering, even absolutely. though there are idiots out there yeah, who sometimes absolutely. try and hold you back. Leon, how are you? Put that thing down now. This scene, we always thought that Mark was better in rehearsal yeah. than he was we in the did. take. And we actually, did like loads of takes. I know, but take he's, great. he's fantastic yeah. in it. It's very funny. Mm. Brian? Brian Chadwick? Don't know what happened? We just got a, a bin up on it, didn't we, about yeah. the rehearsal? We thought well, it was Sometimes you, you lose a kind of sense of whether or not something was good or I, not. Um, yeah. I, I went to his place in Yorkshire. I worked there, helping. Breeding, breeding pigs. <laughs> and, um, He's got a good face. He's got a great I, uh, face. I made a mistake. Janet's wonderful. There's a pig. All the way through. Every frame. That is half a sheep. It might be kosher. Brian was angry, so um, uh, I've come back and I stole the pig. Fine. Welcome back. <laughs> You're taking this very calmly, Sidney. Well, of course I'm taking it very calmly. My son's a pig farmer! Pig farm's a pig farmer! It's not his fault. Do we want to play bridge with the Hoobermans? <laughs> no, <I don't> <laughs> <laughs> not his fault? Is he a scientist to invent a kosher pig? Deliberate decision here to keep this on a two-shot on Janet and Mark. Because the way that they, they're all their body language, you, you need to see both yeah, of them together. Absolutely. I think if we'd shot singles, you'd have lost so much of the great stuff they were both doing, you know, in terms of the way they were interacting with each other. So how did you guys decide which one was going to talk to which actor in each scene to give them notes and stuff? I really only, I mainly spoke to Vadim if I wanted to give a note to an actor, except for Mark, when, if there was something that was, I thought was peculiar, to, but otherwise it was Vadim. And then I would go through Vadim, and Vadim would set up the shots, and he'd talk to me, and I'd talk to him. It worked well, very, very nicely, really. Yeah. Indeed. Yeah, well, we didn't really argue, we just had so much fun together. Ah, uh... so. oh, this was our gaffer that we met, Kev. Oh, yeah. Gaffer, for those of you who don't know, is the chief electrician. It'll be all right. You see, I think we should have shown oh, it there because be we spent all that money on it. I know. And this is my husband, Brian. But I mean, they shaved Brian. all the hair off and Boy. used it in babe, so it wasn't all wasted. We exactly. Uh, actually, I must say, having said that we sh should abandon the film earlier, this is a very nice sequence. So, the chat and this tomorrow. is absolutely true. Oh, Jewish families. Yeah. Really? There's always a can of lager <laughs> oh, yes. under the sink. <laughs> and it's always left there by people who have done work on the house. In fact, didn't There's actually a lot of dust on that. If you, look, uh, you, know, if you blew off a lot of dust. In fact, didn't you, you, we put this scene in no. because Janet felt it needed an extra scene, didn't she? She did, didn't she? Mm. She yeah. did. She really liked she, that Before scene. when we were at the script stage, she thought they yeah. needed another script. Another, another scene. She was right as well. Mm, it was a, yeah, it was a good scene. <laughs> yeah. So there's a, a story yeah. here. Mark. Yeah. yeah. It's so Mark you used to get very frustrated in a kind of a hard, yeah, slightly no, lighthearted way that, that we kept shooting scenes more where more we only ever saw the back of his head. <laughs> And uh, we were getting towards the end of the shoot here. As you can see, again, in this style of long shots, kind of mise-en-scene, as they would say, into which actors come, just like that delicatessen scene earlier. We decided to do this in exactly the same way, with Mark walking, as you've seen, all the way from that doorway, all the way around the room to come to sit here. So uh, we decided that uh, they'd rehearsed it really quite well, and that we'd... You always try the shoot, old trick. We shoot, shoot the them, but without, yeah, without, without telling, telling the actors yes. that we were shooting the rehearsal. Because very often you get the best performance from an actor by shooting the final rehearsal. Because it's very frustrating. Yeah, it's the most natural. They're very relaxed. 
So without telling anybody, we started to turn over on the final rehearsal. So Mark comes into the room and he sits down and he's taken a Polaroid of himself grinning in Navy and he's stuck it into the back of his head. <laughs> and the scene was going really well. The scene was going really well. We were very annoyed. We were very annoyed. It was very unprofessional. It was very unprofessional but very funny and funny. As you can see. Right. Don't talk to me about rights. He's our son. I'm his father, though. It was my sperm. Can we not talk about sperm? <laughs> There's no wrong with the word sperm. You if see, Gary, sort of we're not afraid to talk about to it. Escape from. Right. Obviously, he's a born pig farmer. He'd be far happier with us than down here selling bloody blinds. Is the Chadwick is as plain as your nose. He is, has been, and always will be a geller. But why don't you ask him what he wants? He can make his own decisions. Fine. Right, then. Do you know where he's going? No idea. Sydney, the car keys. I'm coming with you. There's a thing here about oh. women, isn't there, taking yes. control. <laughs> yes. The men are complete frats, basically. This shot was taken from the top of the generator. That's the, electric, the electrical generator for the lights. In my old company, Jack, they did the car off the window. Mm. They did, didn't they? Do you know where he's going? No idea. You think you can slow down a bit? This is the North Circular Road. Yes. This was dangerous, I think, actually. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you think you can slow down a bit? One more word from you, and I'll stuff your testicles with a blunt knife. Yeah, yeah. I really like the score for this bit. We, I, we chose John Murphy and David Hughes because th they wrote the music for, for the band Thomas Lang, which obviously Thomas Lang is the singer for. And uh, that we wanted a, a jazz Feel. feel to the soundtrack, yeah. and they delivered demos. We saw that, that from the Woody Allen. Because Woody Allen was it? Yeah, yeah, jazz feel. Yeah. I thought it was. Uh, no, no, it wasn't. It was from When Harry Met Sally. Yeah. No, and When Harry Met Sally. And When Harry Met Sally. Yeah. The opening title sequence music is uh, we gave them um, Hannah and her sisters to. That's right, Hannah and her sorry. sisters. Yeah. Camera shadow. shadow. <laughs> yes. Oh, stop it. Camera shadow on the road. Oh no. This is Epping Forest. Yeah. Of all places in lovely evening light. We were very lucky with the weather on this film. Were we? I think, yeah, so. I think so, generally speaking. We were pretty lucky. Well, yeah, I don't think we had... We needed... Wait, we got the good light wait. when we needed... We didn't have any sort of rained out. Well, we had some rain in Yorkshire, but... We were inside most of the yeah. time, weren't we? It's quite poignant, this, you know. Well, that's what I was just thinking that as well, actually. <laughs> For film, I mean, rather than our, our <laughs> drunken reminiscences, <laughs> reminiscences. Oh, it's Leon's. There wasn't there another scene you'd shot up in Yorkshire that we didn't use here? Oh, God. We had um, the people th no, through for the, the end. forest. That was right at the end of the film. Yeah. With a pig running away in, yeah. in the forest. Yes, the finding out the whole little... Yes. Uh, see, there was a deleted scene. Mm. I guess they're right. I guess they are. He's a fine man. We should have done the sequel, though, you know. What was that? Yeah, With the shig. Mm. The animated series. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you two. He's coming. Do you remember when we went to the Edinburgh Film Festival? It was the first screening of the film. I used to have nightmares, real nightmares. But we'd go into the Stop. cinema and it would be empty, and that some sort of bought all the tickets, determined to like destroy the the, the premiere of the film. Because I knew that cinema in Edinburgh. Do you not worry about these things? <laughs> No, Did you ever have what nightmares about Barry Norman? I used to have complete nightmares. And now I've put up a so-called British comedy. Do you not have nightmares about Barry Norman? No. It's just me. Or sperm. How long have you been here? Your mother drove. You sorted out your main courses, yeah? Salt beef all round. Be very dangerous. These cucumbers here are new green cucumbers. Really? Yeah, so one's on the table, then you've got to the left, you've got sweet and sour. 
But the new green would just come into fashion at this time here, that one there, yeah. the new green. Egg and onion, incidentally, which I don't know if you ever tried, is disgusting. <laughs> I know, I like egg and onion. Oh, disgusting. I really like that. And chopped liver's also Oh, chopped liver's disgusting. No, chopped liver's lovely. No, it's not disgusting. Do you not like chopped liver? No. Are you really Jewish? <laughs> yes, I am. I like chicken soup. I don't like chopped liver, and I don't like egg and onion. I like salt beef. It's closed down this restaurant, though. Yeah. It has. What are you doing here? Is Jimmy's soon to become Vitelli's flotation tank centre? Then what is it though? What has Jimmy's become? It's become... <laughs> Jimmy's has become. Um, I don't know actually. I haven't been up to Edgeware Road to, uh, to Edgeware to see it really. Oh, I tell you, I tell you what. This violinist has become. He's uh, now in a really famous band. It's Jamiroquai or something like that. He's in a really big band. Do you know this? No. Yeah, his he's, name is um, Simon Cass. Cass. Yeah. And he's become, yeah, he's in a really big... Why hmm. did he play the music at a different time, Stan? So that we had difficulty syncing it all up. I'll, uh, I think this I This is one of those that. before he was famous moments. Yes. Right? Yes. He did. It. We were afraid you don't remember. It's immensely difficult to get this one in time. Oh, it's a very nice arrangement by John and Dunn. In fact, it's very poignant when Gina turns up. Yeah. Yeah. Almost shed tears. A week, copiously. And we managed miraculously to get almost everybody from the film back for that one night. That one night. And it was a long night. <laughs> now, we're about to. You see oh, there? Oh, oh, that huge continuity area. That is, that is Mark Frankel coming <laughs> back in <laughs> to the scene, <laughs> having been outside. This was the last night filming altogether, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I didn't that dreadful oh, Lisa Fabric. What was the production coordinator there? We used to do the, the oink. Remember that newsletter we did every yeah. day on the shoes? The oink. You see, actually, this gets mm, getting shivers down my spine even watching it again now. Do you think he should end up with a Jewish girl or with a non-Jewish girl? Oh, he always has ended up with a non-Jewish girl. No, no, I think he should have ended up with Gina. With Gina? Yeah. It's quite interesting because he should end up with Gina, shouldn't he? But it, it's not clear that they're going to go on and... Mm. Technical so, point coming up here. You've got on a guy about the this light, aren't you? This is one shot. I am. You've this got is to go one shot. I'm very You're proud very of this. Proud of this I'm very proud oh, of this. Yes, this very nice this is one shot done on a track, but there's a huge light at the end of the high street. But you Rob missed Harley. it, didn't you? No, no, it's here. Is it coming up no, here? Is it? Up here steps. he comes. He steps over he comes. The track. How do we hide the source of the light? You, you time it perfectly so that the camera tracks across in front of him as he masks the light. Go for the curtain. Well, you could become an accountant. They're dishonest. That got me in with a lot of accountants. Yeah. Yeah. Did it? Yeah. And by sheer coincidence, that was a net curtain shot. <laughs> Extraordinarily. And we would lost the, the location. We lost the location. The we were going to shoot outside a, a deli. Yeah. And then we... we they we, switched the lights they off. They switched the lights off because of Purim or something. And then I rang them up at two o'clock in the morning and said, can you come and switch them back on? They were not happy, Gary. No, they weren't happy. And so we ran around the whole of Edgeware to try and find an alternative location and ended up in front of Edgeware Station, which is where this is. And the next morning we rang them up very last very nicely if we could Did shoot as a location. <laughs> Unfortunately, they said yes. It's a far better location than it is. Yeah, it's it's a lovely good. location. Idiots. But I have to say, we were very lucky throughout the film. There were lots of things like that that, that, that made the film possible. Mm -hmm. And I think probably the, the most extraordinary thing was so what made you the lunch that Gary and I had pig? and sat down and said, look, you know, why don't we make the film together? And we, we've had various discussions about various things. But at one point I said, you know, I, I think know I know who should play. Leon. Yeah. Mm. Oh, and Gary yeah. said, no, yeah, well, he, well, hang on a minute. <laughs> you know, we, we're on a sort of non-starter here because I've already cast him. Yeah. And, and what had happened was I, I used to edit actors showreels and only about a month or six weeks before uh, Gary and I sat down to have the discussion about making the film, I'd edited the showreel of an actor who I thought was incredible and I thought was going to be a movie star and who I thought would be perfect for this. And so when I said at that lunch to Gary, 
You found Leon. I said, I found absolutely Leon. no way. I was, yes, I was half up from the table. <clears throat> and I said, and well, it's this actor I did a show of for called Mark Frankel. And I think you nearly fell off your yeah. chair at that point. Yeah. Well, also, there was a time when we cast Vin Vincenzo. And uh, we he was a complete coincidence as well. Because we said, we sent the script in to him. And we sent the script to his agent. And he turned up at the office in one To do a show yes, To do a show yeah, right. two minutes later. Yeah, we just and seen him in spotlight. Vin Vincenzo that's Ricotta. We said, well, that was quick. We just sent you the script like half an hour ago by Bites to the <laughs> yes. West End's your agent. He said, no, I'm here to do a showreel. So, and we cast him. We thought it was too much, too much good for oh, you. What about the pig? Can you imagine? Leon. Is a big farmer? Nothing ever goes to... Oh, we were having a laugh there, wasn't it? Good time. We were very lucky, weren't we? Yeah. Across a whole range of things, very we were very lucky. Lots of generous people. And most of all, Mark. It's just incredible. Yeah. It was wonderful. And there were 12 British films made this year that we made in the Olympic Park. Yeah, I mean, we were the only British film in production when we started making About it. About four or five weeks. Yeah. yeah, I mean, huge generosity from, from everyone with inside the, the equipment and all that sort of stuff that we got for, for nothing up front, as it were. And how do you feel you've come on since the Olympic film about it? I don't think I've ever made anything as funny as this. Well, what was that film you did with Liz Hurley? <laughs> that was funny for the wrong reasons. <laughs> that was funny because it was so bad. <laughs> but I, I don't think it was quite scary. No, well, this was an out-and-out -out comedy. You, yeah, have you done an out-and-out -out comedy since? The real Howard Spitz. The, the real Howard Spitz. Yes, that was funny. It's funny. That was funny. You made Kelsey funny Kelsey like dressed up in a cow's outfit. Yeah, a cow suit. Yeah. But the lovely thing about this is that almost everybody on that film, from runners to directors of photography, have all gone on to have really successful careers. Yeah, I mean, most people hadn't done the job they were doing. They'd all kind of moved up a grade mm -hmm. to do that. So I think virtually everyone had it's come on quite a long way since. Almost all of them now work all the time at the top of their professions. Except us. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Except us. What happened there? So basically, we helped out all these people in the British film industry. And then they all went and did really good stuff and just left us behind. Bob, yeah. uh, Bob and Jim. Remember that? They lived Bob in a camper Jim. van throughout the entire shoot. From Newcastle, the eye. Because there was no work. Jane, Jane Green. Green. She went on and wrote lots of novels. She's chick. a hugely successful chick flick yeah, novelist. Chick -flick novelist. Yeah. 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 Yeah, she's very successful. Yeah. Ah. Well, it's nice of Eric to commission it. Yes. It was. Eric did commission it. Out of our £153,000, <laughs> £30,000 went straight to him oh, on the first day of principal photography. Yeah. But he had invested all that yes. money through his company, and, that, and it was very important that uh, he, he got it back. And without him, there would be no film. Absolutely. He had the vision. He saw it, exactly. It's very nice of him. This guy, I'm telling you, is mafia. This, sorry, I'm sorry <laughs> to come back. But John and Dave told me this guy had like a guy in the boot <laughs> when he was doing this. I he don't think no, it. They were winding me up again. I don't think it's true. Yeah, they were winding me up. Scouts, <laughs> I think they had some fun at our expense, John and Dave. They did. Mm. John, especially. John. You can tell that it was a film made with a lot of generosity mm. because look at that it's list of with thanks. <laughs> Alex Hay and Woburn Golf Course. Why do we thank them? I, don't I think by the end people are just taking <laughs> the mic, putting people in for the hell of it. <laughs>